Hello, and welcome to Lecture 5 of the Motion in a Straight Line unit in Phys 1104. Up till now in this unit, we've largely been sticking to one dimension, but now we're going to take the ideas that we've been looking at and extend them to two dimensions. As long as we're talking about motion in a straight line, it might occur to you to wonder why we even need to be able to work in two dimensions. After all, for motion in a straight line, you can always choose your axes so that the motion lies along the line. So for this airplane, you could choose axes so that, for example, the y-axis points along the motion. But suppose there's a second airplane. No matter which way you choose your axes, you're going to have to describe the motion of at least one of these airplanes in two dimensions. This just illustrates that for motion in a straight line, there are still situations where it's inconvenient or impossible to align our axes with the motion. On the other hand, you might wonder why we're going to restrict ourselves to just two dimensions. After all, the world is three-dimensional, maybe. Well, at least the everyday world that we observe with our own senses has three spatial dimensions. But in this course, we're rarely going to work in more than two dimensions. Why is that? Well, I'll illustrate an example. You already know how to calculate a displacement in two dimensions. What about three dimensions? Well, in three dimensions, all we have to do now is, in addition to the x components and the y components of the vectors, we have to write down z components. And now the calculation of a displacement goes exactly the way it would in two dimensions, except we have an extra set of components to subtract. So there's really no difference between working in two dimensions and three dimensions, except that there's more bookkeeping in three dimensions. Now, I don't want you to think that there's no difference between working in two dimensions and working in three. For example, the job of going from magnitude direction form to component form, or the other way, is quite a bit more complicated in three dimensions than it is in two. But that's just a mathematical complication. The point is that there's, for the moment, no physics that we need three dimensions to describe that we can't describe just as well in two dimensions. That will eventually change. Eventually, we'll need to work with cross products, which can only exist in three dimensions. And we'll need them because in Phys 1204, we'll be working with magnetic fields, which involve cross products. So let's look at how to represent a straight line motion in an arbitrary direction. And I'm going to work through a specific example and then generalize it at the end. So suppose we have an airplane and it's moving in some direction that makes an angle theta with the x-axis. Let me be very specific. Suppose it's moving at 200 meters per second at a 60 degree angle to the x-axis it's going to be much more convenient to have that velocity in component form. And so I want you to check that you're understanding so far. I want you to change this velocity into component form. So if you're doing this through Moodle, Moodle will now ask you this question, but otherwise you should still decide which of these you think is the correct answer before moving on. 